Hello and welcome to ILTV's Evening Update. I'm Aaron Porras here with the latest news from Israel. The Knesset's Ethics Committee voted today to ban Israeli Arab lawmaker Basil Gattas from participating in discussions in the Knesset's various committees, from submitting law proposals, and from addressing the plenum for the next six months. He was not, however, banned from voting in the Knesset plenum, and his salary was not confiscated. Members of the Ethics Committee say that Gattas, who is suspected of helping imprison Palestinians to commit more acts of terror, has deeply harmed the Knesset's prestige and that he cannot hide behind his immunity and continue to commit crimes against the country. Gattas is suspected of passing phones to imprison senior terrorists of the Hamas and Fatah organizations and of delivering handwritten messages to them. He has been charged with conspiracy to commit a crime, fraud, breach of trust, and violation of Israeli prison service orders. In a fairly shocking report, the Institute for National Security Studies, or INSS, says that the Lebanese terror group Hezbollah remains the most serious conventional threat that Israel is facing today. The report was submitted to Israeli President Rivlin earlier today and details how Hezbollah is in possession of rockets that can reach anywhere in the Jewish state, precision-guided missiles, attack drones, suicide drones, ground-to-air defense systems, and of course a lot of militarily trained manpower. The report goes on to describe how Hamas, while enjoying a period of respite since the 2014 Gaza war, is building up arms in an apparent preparation for another conflict with Israel. With respect to dealing with Hezbollah, however, the Institute advised increasing intelligence efforts and continuing to disrupt Hezbollah's supply lines. The advice for dealing with Iran was a little bit more difficult. At the moment, Iran is not the biggest existential threat to the Jewish state, but Iran's funding of paramilitaries is a growing issue, and the possibility of dealing with a nuclear-powered enemy state is allegedly just over the horizon. However Israel chooses to deal with these issues, one thing is clear. According to the report's conclusion, for Israel to continue along the status quo would reduce Israel's options and endanger its future as a Jewish and democratic state. Israeli ambassador to the United Nations Danny Danone said that the only request he has for Antonio Guterres, the new UN Secretary General who took over on Sunday, was to be objective. Danone criticized the negative energy at the UN and said he wanted Guterres to be able to withstand the tremendous pressure against Israel that exists there. Guterres, who served as Portugal's Prime Minister between 1995 and 2002, took over from Ban Ki-moon. Former Prime Minister Ehud Barak said that Guterres was friendly and was definitely not part of the extreme left in Europe. Of Guterres he said, quote, I don't remember any anti-Israel comments by him. I think he will be more fair and less aggressive in the UN than his predecessors. There is nothing official yet, but word has it that Israeli promoters are working hard to bring Celine Dion to Israel this summer. According to Ynet, more than one local concert promoter is currently in talks with Dion, the Canadian superstar and My Heart Will Go On singer. If she does come to Tel Aviv next summer, she'll be in good company. Aerosmith, Justin Bieber, and Guns N' Roses are just some of the big headline acts that are scheduled to perform in the Jewish state. But having sold over 230 million albums globally and a spectacular international career, Celine Dion is one of the most anticipated superstars to ever arrive in Israel. Dion is so big, in fact, that the singer spends much of the year performing at the Coliseum at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. A Nazareth-based biotechnology startup company has obtained $650,000 in financing to help in its development of Artifacia, a biodegradable patch that uses nanofibers to replace and regenerate soft tissue damage in neurosurgery. The Israeli company Nurami Medical was founded in April 2014 by Dr. Amir Bahar and Nora Nisel. The two received a grant of 3 million shekels from Israel's Office of the Chief Scientist and Next Generation Technology, a medical technology incubator in Nazareth, whose purpose is to promote Arab and Jewish business partnership and entrepreneurship. The product they are developing is based on nanotechnology and nanofibers, which supports better regeneration and recuperation of the body's tissue because the nanofibers are designed to be similar to natural tissues. That's all for now. Tune in to ILTV for our main daily broadcast playing after this. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you tomorrow with our morning briefing from Israel at 8 a.m. Eastern Time.